I'm comedian Timmy Boyle, and this is the greatest live Instagram comedy experience that nobody knew about. March of 2020, I just arrived home from tour when COVID-19 shut down the world. So despite being severely technically challenged, I started a daily live Instagram show right here from my living room. Because how hard could it be? And how long could a pandemic last? Apparently longer than five months. So now, a hundred episodes later, I've called comedians as diverse in experience as they are in style from all around the world to discuss comedy, life, and, well, whatever. I had no goals, which was a great idea. I avoided tech checks, which was a bad idea. And I eventually wore no pants. The jury's still out on that one. And my OJ, over 150 days, transformed from refreshing drink to rancid mystery liquid right before our eyes. It was a random, free-flowing, hilariously messy ride into the minds and backstage lives of entertainers where anything could happen, and did, including a trip to a goat farm. Overcoming a lack of direction, resources, and tech ineptness, as well as multiple zombie cyber attacks, a project not expected to last even a week soon developed into a must-watch show like no other. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself, right here, on another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. Is that it? Did we get it all? Awesome. <sighs> Cheers. Well, welcome everybody to uh, another episode of Calling Comedians in Quarantine. It is 7 o'clock on some day. Who knows when? Uh, we have had uh, an interesting uh, three weeks here, just uh, kind of being in my living room. Um, and I'd like to, uh, to welcome all of you for joining me from your living room into my living room. Uh, Mary Jane Baker says uh, at 7.01 I was starting to worry uh, well, that was because I decided that uh, at about 6.58, I was going to have a quick snack right before coming on the show. And so I ate into this, uh, it's a kind bar. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, it got all stuck in my teeth. And then I was running to the bathroom and trying to brush my teeth. And then I was like, oh, it's almost seven. So I got to stop doing that. Like I could have had a snack at, say, 6.30, quarter to seven but uh, I didn't. Uh, Granny Smith, 4645, we're here. That's cool. Um, uh, I am so happy that you're here, Granny Smith, 4645. Uh, I am here too, as well as other people that are coming in. Uh, some of the people that we're seeing right now are, have uh, been joining us for quite a while here on the show, while well, others are, uh, are new. But I wanna thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Um, whatever you've been doing in quarantine, uh, this is a great opportunity for us to just spend some time together. Uh, Mark Christopher Lawrence uh, has shown up here in the room, and uh, we're going to be bringing him here in one second. But just for the record, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Timmy Boyle. You are watching Calling Comedians in Quarantine. This is episode 22. We've been calling comedians from all around North America, just talking about comedy and life and quarantine, finding out what people have been doing. This is a chance for you to uh, kind of maybe laugh with us, be encouraged by us, and get a chance to see uh, us in our um, offstage environment, which I think uh, is an interesting thing. Sometimes people think all I do is walk around in a suit all day and drink orange juice. I do drink orange juice, but I'm currently not even wearing pants. So it's kind of a big drop off. But that's what this show is about. Just trying to be a little bit real during this quarantine time. So let's bring in uh, Mark Christopher Lawrence here and see how this journey goes. Let us, here we go, go. Mark Christopher Lawrence, he's unable to join. Why is he unable to join? Uh-oh, uh-oh, are we having technical problems? Let's try again, here we go. Waiting, waiting. Connecting. Mark, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good, man, how are you doing? Doing good, what a nice day. Southern California, baby. This is how we do it. Wow. Where are you? In like a storage locker facility? Yeah, I had to go find something in my storage. <laughs> <laughs> I 
What What are you looking for? Old old comedy jokes? No, I'm looking for an assistant. There he is. I'm social distancing. <laughs> you are. He, he is. He definitely is social distancing. <laughs> That's so cool. Man, you're looking good. I'm feeling good, man. I'm just, uh, you know, just trying to make the best out of, out of a, a, a situation that we have no control over. Yeah, no, absolutely. I've, that's what I've been telling people. I was down getting groceries a couple of days ago, and they were talking about people that have been coming in getting all irritated at them for all the restrictions that they have, like spacing and stuff. And I'm like, like what are people getting mad about? Like, nobody planned this. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know people... People will allow themselves to be, to get all gnarled up about any and everything. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, this is a situation where we have no control over it. So why bother being mad? Well, what's, what's bother being mad in general? It's a, it, it's, it doesn't really help us out live life. In, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Hey, exactly. Uh, so. Crystal here is asking you during quarantine, are you maintaining your Clydesdale diet? What's your Clydesdale diet? <laughs> uh, no, it's kind of hard to maintain my Clydesdale diet. You know, Clydesdale mostly consists of hay. <laughs> hey, give me some of this. Hey, how about some of that? <laughs> but, but so, um, so you know, I mean, it, it's, it's like getting to the store and actually – buying stuff that's on my on my real diet is kind of difficult because sometimes you go in there and nothing that i need is available right yeah 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 so which is bad because it it, it forces me to eat uh what, whatever and and you can't just leave me to whatever because <laughs> i'm going to choose the bad whatever every time <laughs> now have you have you found that um the quarantine set situation has caused you to eat worse or better? Because there's a lot of people online saying now they're just sitting around eating snacks. And then there's other people I'm seeing that have chosen to go healthy. How have you been doing? I eat better when I'm at home. I, you know, just, just like just being at home, you yeah. know, I, I, I make better choices because I can cook every meal. But I think um, uh, the, the, the biggest part for me is, is I'm staying up too late. And, and when I do that, then... I tend to eat too late. Right. What are, they doing? <laughs> what are those people doing outside? Right. Yeah. So, so, so I think, I, I think I have to control better when I eat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause I, I, I don't have that under control that right now that's ruling me. Well, I have definitely been finding that, uh, by not being on the road, um, I actually feel a little more, a little more relaxed. I think I'm better rested. And uh, I think I'm eating better in general. It's almost been a nice little break for me. It's tough on the road. Like, like when you're on the road, it's like, it's like, like, like the date night tour, for example. Yeah. You know, it's like the schedule was so grueling that, that, you know, you try to sleep as long as you can. And then next thing you know, it's three o'clock. You got to be at the theater. Yeah. And then, and then once you start that process, then you're not eating until after the show. And then it's Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah. And, and know, Boston so, pizza, Boston pizza, or Tim Hortons—the only thing. Right, exactly, better. exactly. And so, and, and so, sometimes you will, we weren't near a, a Boston pizza, yeah. so at least at Boston pizza, I could get a salad or something. But, but right. Tim Hortons, not a whole lot of healthy going on in there. <laughs> well, it is good to see you, and that was the last time I did see you was on the date night tour. And for those just those who are tuning in right now, uh, my name is Timmy Boyle. Mark Christopher Lawrence is below here, unless your phone is upside down. <laughs> And uh, you were watching Calling Comedian Things in Quarantine. Um, so the last time we saw each other was on date night. I think it was St. Catharines. We were going to take me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, St. Catharines was great. I, it, was, it was a lot of fun. The energy was amazing. Uh, I, I just saw on YouTube yesterday the interviews that we did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so they're, up, they're up and running on YouTube. Oh, I think that was, yeah, I think uh, Andy, Andy sent me that. And we have all of our interviews and just clips from the show. Um, I, I, I don't think they had any, I didn't see any clips from the show, but, okay. but, I, but I think, um, I, I think that probably means that, that there's some clips somewhere. That's cool. I'd love, I'd love to get that footage. Well, Christi we're, we're supposed to be getting it. Hey, Christina Larice is in here. She just came in. She was the one who interviewed us um, oh, cool. for, for Yes TV there. So, Christina, welcome. 
Hey, Christina. Um, we want all that footage, Christina. So uh, hook us up whenever you can. <laughs> Um, but yeah, watching those videos, uh, they, they were amazing to work with. Hey, um, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit um, just about comedy in general with you. Um, you, you, but you started though, is this true? You started in Compton, that's where, like literally straight out of Compton, that's where you grew up? Yeah, I grew up in Compton. And, and was, was comedy um, a way to cope with life? Was it just a, 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 a random life decision? What, how did comedy become part of your journey? Well, I was a funny kid, and then when I got to high school, my English teacher, Mrs. Schilling, got me involved in speech and debate and and acting, and then she introduced me to a guy who was a mentor who got me involved in comedy uh, with my best friend, Lennon, who, who um, you know, I, I think Lennon was really the driving force of me doing comedy, hmm. and but, but Perry put me on the first show. He was, he was um, at USC at the time, and he produced a show called uh, Evening of Soul. And he put me on one of those shows. And I didn't even have an act at that point. So right. he taught me how to shape an act. Yeah. And, uh, and then I went to the comedy store. Lennon took me to the comedy store and said, hey, you got to get on stage and, and, and do this. So I signed up for Potluck at the comedy store and went, did three minutes. And I was funny. And that was the beginning. And I was in the 11th grade. Now that was now that was straight stand up, but you, I mean, you've you've spent thirty plus years like doing TV movies as well. Like, what when when did the yeah. acting take or take part of that? Well, I, you know, Mrs. I did my first play with Mrs. Schilling in yeah. in, in high school, and then uh, when I got to college, I was a junior and auditioned for the the USC Bachelor of Fine Arts acting program and got in. Okay. And so it's a four year program. They put me in as a sophomore. And I started working professionally the same year in, in theater, and my first uh, uh, TV show was Hill Street Blues. So my oh, very okay. first audition for television, I got the job. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Now, do, you, one of do, the, you have, do you have a preference one way or the other? Do you, do you like being behind the camera, or do you like being on the stage? I like stage better than, than, than film and TV because the, it, it's like stand-up. You get that live feedback. You affect yeah, yeah. the people. You affect people immediately. Uh, with 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 TV and film, you got to wait and see if the if the editor does you a good turn. Right. You're, you're, yeah. It really, it really is in someone else's hand or a few people's hands, I guess. Yeah. Well, well for example, like in, in 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 Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith, um, our big scene together, my best take was the second take. Okay. And they use they use his best take. Right. <laughs> so, so clearly, you know, with with that in mind, I, I just like the, the the immediacy of having that energy from the from the live audience. So I, I love stage. It just doesn't pay. The state, yeah, that's funny because my well, it's, it doesn't doesn't pay regardless. But I mean, right now, like I went to school for film and television. That's still my favorite medium. But yeah. for now, for me, you know, it's the live performance that pays. And so it's like hustling to get those gigs and then trying to find a way to, uh, to open up those other doors. But right. I, I, I always tell people that, that, you know, when I was, when I was um, hustling as an opener for, for some years, I, I, um, I would tell people that that was my, my day job. Comedy is my day job and my regular gig is acting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, now you, you, uh, there's a question here about Chuck now. So, if, if you go to like IMDb, which I always do with everybody that I'm talking to, just to kind of see, it says you're best known for Terminator 2, but I would say you're best known for Chuck. Uh, I, yeah, Chuck followed by Fear of a Black Hat. Okay. You know, I, I don't think people know me from, from Terminator 2. <laughs> that's why, yeah, that, that's what they say. They say you're, you're best known for Terminator 2. Um, so this, yeah. guy, this uh, um, follower here is asking about a Chuck reunion. Is that a possibility? Is that something that is... Um, stick close to, to, to my IG this, this, this week, big announcement coming, uh, probably sometime this week about something. About, oh, okay. All right. You heard it here. I'm calling comedians and good quarantine. So I would say people just follow me and, and you'll see, uh, that there's something exciting coming down. With Chuck. Eh. That's beautiful. Um, like L Lana, who I think you know as well from up here on the tour, uh, yes. she, she said that my ultimate goal was to be on Who's the Boss, because I wanted to be with Alyssa Milano, that's her back there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, 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 never, you, cross, you never crossed paths with her, have you? No, but my friend Jay Lamont uh, loves her, so you, you and he would have to fight over her. 
<laughs> okay, well, you, you 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 get them to connect with me because uh, that's my that's my celebrity crush. I met her once. I gave her a copy of my book, and she smiled. So I know she read it, but uh, I would love to be able to connect with her again. Yeah, if I ever who, run into uh, her, I'll, I'll let her know. Oh, please do. Hey, who uh, who was your um, who was your celebrity crush growing up when you when you were watching TV? Who did you have one? Oh, there were a couple. Uh, you know, I dream of Jeannie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Thelma from Good Times, who who I was just enamored with, and she ended up playing my wife in a commercial. Oh wow! You actually got to work with your your celebrity crush. Yeah, yeah. And then as I got older, it became Selma Hayek. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. You got some good choices there. You got some good choices. <laughs> Hey, I saw you also worked on uh, George Wentz's show. Now, I think like, Cheers to me is one of the best sitcoms that have ever been created. Mm -hmm. um, what was it? What was it like working? I always like hearing about. I heard about um, Ted Danson from uh, Joel Madison a little while ago, and he heard, or not from George. Who, who did I see that from? Robert G. Lee said Ted Danson was a great dude, and that really made me feel good. How was George Went to work with? So, so I've worked with with George. I've worked with. Uh, John Ratzenberger and I've worked with Shelley Long. Nice. Um, and George is amazing to work with. Just a generous guy. Um, you know, uh, we might not talk for a couple of years and then when we talk, it's like we just worked yesterday. Just nice. a great guy. Uh, John Ratzenberger, uh, he and I hit it off immediately. We were both in, in That Darn Cat for Disney and okay. he's directing a lot of stuff now, but, but he and I are friends. Um, and then Shelly, uh, she was on a show. She had a show called Kelly Kelly that I did with her. I did all 13 episodes of her show. Um, yeah. And it, uh, you know, didn't go anywhere, but, but, but she was nice by then. By then. Um, now, you, you, worked, you worked on a show. Uh, you, you worked on Chuck, which had how many, how many main, main characters were in that one? What was your, what was your cast? Probably 10. Okay, so that's a, that's a big cast. I mean, that's what I that's, thought. That's a big cast. That's what I thought made Cheers really stand out above some of the other sitcoms is because it wasn't just three or four people. There was it was a larger group, and it was a gr I mean, it was magic what they did together. What, yeah, it's, what, a, it's an ensemble piece, and and and, and um, you know, I mean, clearly, like with Chuck, you, you know, there were two elements of it. There were there were the there was the spy world, and then there was the buy more world, and and. I always said that the buy more could stand on its own as a show, you know, as a sitcom yeah. without the spy stuff. Um, and, and then there was a show called, uh, there's a show recently that, that came out that's very similar to what the buy more was. So I was right. <laughs> what, um, so what's, what's the key to, to bringing that ensemble together? It can't, can't clearly be just, just talent. I mean, it's same with like sports. Like what, what is that chemistry to put together a, an ensemble like that for a hit show? Well, I, you know, I think I think that that first and foremost, they they hired people who were good at what they do, yeah. And then it just happened that that you know everybody was really cool to work with, and everybody was were really good people, and yeah. so it was it was nice to to be on a show with people that that were really good people, and that's and that's what it was. What uh, what are you working on right now? I think I saw somewhere that you have a talk show somewhere. Is that true? Um, well, I have six episodes of a talk show on pureflix.com. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't think we're going to do any more. I, I, we just didn't get the, get the numbers up. Um, and if I had to do it again, I would do it a little bit differently. Um, I'm working on my one-man show, which is, which is uh, a theater piece, which, you know, hopefully I can get that up and running sometime, sometime by the end of the year. But now with this, I don't know. I mean, I have time to write, but I don't have time to, to, to you know, when, when this is over, I don't think I'll have time to workshop it. I'll have to, I'll have to be grinding to, you know, keep, keep the bills paid. Um, uh, I've got a couple of movies that, that kind of are on hold because of this. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I'm, I'm pitching a show, uh, a TV show, and, and uh, hopefully that will happen. If that happens, you know, I think... Uh, I'll be really excited because that's that's something that that um, we we actually took out and, and pitched to a company uh, right right around the time big um, uh, two and a half men were were blowing up being huge and okay. the timing just wasn't right and now you know it was, the timing was right until this <laughs> until COVID came in. 
What, um, so what are you doing? What are you doing to, to, to stay busy then? I mean, you're, you're obviously, you were very busy. I mean, none of us are out on the road right now. Well, what are you doing? I'm trying to uh, recapture my desk in my office. And, <laughs> and um, uh, I'm in my storage unit trying to make some room because my sister is, is, is uh, doing some stuff at her house and she has a piece of furniture that I want. And so I had to make some room for it over here so um you know just piddle, i'm piddling around I'm, yeah I'm, I, I taught a couple of shakespeare workshops for vip ignite uh on facebook and um you know i'm 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 working on me a little bit you know on, on, on some of my my stuff that 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 i feel like i need to work on on me you know mm -hmm. getting my patients together and and uh you know clearly trying to work my weight some and and you know that sort of thing and that's about it well i think i mean i've been I've, we've been talking a lot especially over this this show and talking to different comics and stuff and i think um i've been trying to tell people that even though there's so much bad going on like i'm finding that there's been a lot of time for me to um process about me all those things that we wanted to do but but we couldn't because we were too busy projects yeah. that were always pushed to the back whether it could yeah. be house cleaning it could be for me there was a lot of comedic stuff that i wanted to get done projects yeah. that i wanted to do even a show like this i was always kind of going i should do something like this but i don't have the right lighting i don't have the right sound and then this comes down and forces you to go you know what like stop being so perfectionist and just start creating right. that's what just, you love just, to just do. get it done yeah and it's been so, it's been really kind of freeing in this in the same like i'm stuck in my living room essentially but there's a very there's a sense of freedom that's happening in my life right now um on so many levels which has been really unexpected yeah i you know it, it's funny too because i um since it's been down i've done a lot of interviews yeah and yeah. and uh and I actually got a job yesterday. Somebody called me and, and offered me, you know, a, a role in a film. And, you know, they don't know when it's going to shoot yet, but hopefully it'll work <laughs> out with the, with the other two. You know, I don't have to jump through the hoops for it. That's, that's the good thing. Yeah, I think, I think the, the hustle, the hustle for me, because I, I'm always looking like my next gig is my next paycheck and the yeah. hustle to try to keep booking and nobody's booking anything now, right? People, like, no. like people will say, you know, yeah, let's, you know, let's talk about that. But there's going to be no deposit checks being sent. There's going to be nothing nope. like that. Nope. So it's really allowed me to just kind of live in the moment and create now. And I think what it's going to do is, is put myself and I think a lot of entertainers in a position that coming out of this thing, we might even have more exposure than we ever gave ourselves before because we've had time to kind of do stuff like this and to market. Right. Like, you know, it's been pretty amazing. Well, I've noticed that my, my, my you know, my Instagram is, is growing. Like the past couple of days, you know, I picked up a couple hundred followers, and 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 I think um, I, I think the biggest thing from this is is coming out of this uh, because the first couple of days I was worried because I was losing gigs every day, every, every, you know, yeah. uh, and, and and you know all from mid March through June I got nothing anymore, all right. of that's gone, yeah. and so and then I hadn't booked much in June anyway because I was thinking I was going to take a little vacation. And, <laughs> and so, uh, so really, uh, I have one gig on the books for June. That's the thing that I produce. Hmm. But but if that doesn't happen, then I have nothing to July, and, and July is thin as well. So yeah, you know, I you know, what do you do? I can't worry about it. So I, I just put my trust in God and go. You know what? God's going to bring me through this. It's, it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, and and I think that the, the the thing that I'm finding out about myself is I'm okay with it. Hmm. You know what well, I mean? What I'm, I'm like, I'm not panicking. What I've loved what I've loved about because we we you I was so happy to have you up here on our tour um, and not just on date night but here on the circuit tour up here. Yeah. And um, what I loved about touring with you is not only your comedic talent um, and the conversations we were able to have, but but the the po the positive spirit and the positive outlook. And I can imagine that. Um, you know, that's, that's obviously helping in a time like this because you, you perceive life with a, with a hopeful spirit, um, which is uh, crucial, I think. Yeah. I, you know, it's like, it's like years ago, a good friend of mine, he's, he's one of my best friends from, from college. Um, I was stressing over rent and phone bills and all that. And he was like, you know what, 
here's the thing. He says, you know you're going to come through this. Mm -hmm. He says, and, and it may turn out the way you want it to. It may not. He says, but the thing is, you'll get through it. And um, the thing you don't have any control over is how long it's going to take. Right. And once that clicked in my head, I got this feeling of just relax about everything. It's like some things are out of my control. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, like um, I, I spent a, a number of years going, man, why, why isn't my career where I want it to be right now? Why am, am I not doing this or I'm not doing that? And the thing is, is that, is that, you know, you can't look at somebody else and at what they're doing and think, you know, I, I should be doing that or, or whatever. You got you to gotta follow your own journey and be comfortable with your journey. And then when things start opening up, you know, you'll be fine. It's like, it's like, and, and I, I clearly see a point when, you know, for me as a stand up, because I, I, I stopped stand up for three years and because I was acting so much and okay. then, and then got back into it. And then when I did, you know, it was like starting over. You yeah. know, um, but once I hit my stride and, and got to the point where I felt like, uh, OK, I'm still a headliner and, and and started getting back into it. And then there came a point where things just started falling into place. Mm. So like from from, for example, from uh, the start of the date night tour from just before that started through May my books were full. It's like I had no weekends available. It's like yeah. I was really busy. And, um, and then it became, you know, how do I juggle these acting things that are coming up? You know, and that's a good place to be. Yeah. You know, and so now that the, my schedule is cleared, I'm not worried about it because I, I know that I'm in a place where I'll come out of this and things will come back. And I, um, I think for me, the biggest thing is to just relax, enjoy this time, write while I'm while I'm I'm off while I have time to write and then I think the only thing about writing comedy when I'm when in this environment is that I don't really have uh, a stage to put them on right now I mean I could put them up on on Instagram I could do stuff live but it's not the same when you have the audience there because you don't really know the timing of it until you're yeah. in front of an audience so yeah. then so my next few gigs I'll be sliding in new bits in between stuff that I know that works <laughs> Well, I can tell you that I, I took, I went into this year really going, I'm going to, I'm going to take, take everything up a level. I was, you know, this was going to be a year. I just finished coming out of like, I think I'm in year 11 now of full time. And I was like, you know what? I really need to go up a level. I got to put, push myself, got to do more stuff. And then this and this happened and we ended up having to cancel some tours. And, and I was just like, oh no, like this takes me down. But then I'm finding, like you said, like we don't, we don't know. We, you know, you can plan all you want, but you know, I've actually been able to do some stuff now in something that looked bad initially because I'm going, oh, well, now I'm going to take a step back. Like I was supposed to, this was supposed to be like a year of growth. Right. But I think the year of growth is still happening. It's just happening in a way I didn't expect it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and that's, that's the thing. It's like, it's like we have to take, we have to take this as, as uh, an opportunity to see what good can come of it. Yeah. And good will come out of everything, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Hey, um, we're going to get ready to go here. I want to thank you for being on here, though. Uh, Crystal's, punny, though. Me, Crystal's Punny asks, though, do you have a favorite Corona joke? I mean, everybody's got a Corona joke. Do you have one? Yeah, there's been a lot of Corona jokes going around. I saw one the other day that I tagged. And basically, you know, that joke was people are going to come out of, out of this either really good cooks or uh, really good drunks. And I was like, well, then some of y'all are going to come out of here really knocked up. And you're gonna be dropping baby names like like COVID with a K and uh, quarantine <laughs> with a Q, you, you a, a COVID with a Q. You know, this is my new COVID nineteen baby. <laughs> that that you know, is so. that is for sure gonna happen. <laughs> well, that's the bell, my friend, which signals that uh, we're getting ready to end this show. Um, Thank you, sir. What what would be what would be something that you would leave with our viewers right now? as a source of laughter or encouragement. However, what is your last statement here to everybody? I would say, you know, cling to your faith, you know, talk to your friends, you know, get on the phone, get on Zoom, get on Instagram and, and, and Facebook Live and talk to people, you know, and, and, and check in on people, you, you know, your, your, your people that you love and care for, and even some that you don't, uh, and, and make sure that they're okay. So, so um, you know, basically stay happy, 
stay healthy and 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 by all means you know stay safe that's awesome man where can everybody find you where how do mark do christopher it? lawrence uh on instagram mark christopher lawrence facebook mark christopher lawrence uh or mcl actor comedian on facebook uh m mark chr lawrence on uh twitter but if you can't remember any of that go to mark and there's links to everything that's beautiful. Man, I love you a lot. I'm, 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 I hope that once this thing ends, we'll be able to get on the stage again together and uh, just stay well, okay? Love you too, brother. And, and, and yeah, let's, uh, you know, I'm going to be calling you because I'm going to need a gig. <laughs> Hey, let's, get, hey, let's, let's go we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for people for season 10 once this, once we're allowed to go back out, man. So we'll, okay. we'll be in touch. Let's get it done. All right, buddy. Have a good Take one. Take care of yourself. Thanks, Mark. Peace. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Calling Comedians Inc. Quarantine. Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you and your friends don't miss any of the laughs. Episodes will be uploaded here at Timmy's Shorts daily until I run out. And be sure to check out the description below for links to connect with myself or my guests on social media, support us by buying merchandise, and also download the podcast version of this show. Until next time, remember, your brain... It's for thinking, not for eating. So just say no to zombies. My name's Timmy Boyle.